It's time for another episode of the Apple Circle Podcast. And Matt, I don't know if you can see this if you're listening to the audio version, Ooh, but I've got me. the 13 Pro in my too. hands. There we go. <laughs> it is new Apple week. Uh, I'm sure we have plenty to talk about here today. A lot of different oh, impressions. Yeah. Uh, there is a lot, some issues, some drama with the iPad mini. I hate the iPad mini, and I'm going to explain why. I think you have... <laughs> differing opinions on that but first uh, i want to thank you guys all so much for listening or watching of course if you don't know this is an audio podcast that also has a video version as well we've got the apple circle podcast youtube channel that you can find linked in the description if you want to watch the full video version of the podcast or if you just want to sort of enjoy uh, some clips and some highlights of the week's episode you can check that out on the youtube channel and also we've got the apple circle hotline because we want to hear from you guys we want to hear your thoughts your questions your comments your feedback if you have anything you'd like to tell us uh let us know you can call that number and i'm going to dig around to find it it is 949-354-3508 that is our apple circle hotline because we'd love to hear from you guys and we have some comments we'll touch on in a bit um but matt happy post iphone launch you've got your hardware now what did you pick up what do you have now uh, on your desk in front of you all right so what am i keeping that's a different yeah. story but I have, this is my personal iPhone 13 Pro, which I mentioned, very happy about having this size again. I've got the 13 Pro Max in the Sierra Blue, and then I've got the iPhone 12, uh, not, or sorry, 12. <laughs> that's how much, <laughs> that's how much these look alike. iPhone 13 in the blue color as well. No mini this year, although I do have sitting here my 12 mini. Um, and then I also, in front of me, have the iPad mini. So lots to talk about. Uh, I don't think you have them with you, but you've also used all these different products. So Yes, got uh, hands-on time with all of them. Spent a lot of time with the iPad mini. have a lot of thoughts on that. And then personally picked up the um, 13 Pro, Sierra Blue. The color's growing on me, I got to say. But we'll get to all that. I guess first, what should we start with? Should we start with iPhone or should we start with iPad mini? What What are you feeling? Hmm. I think we should probably get into iPad mini just because this is where some of the debate and yes. the uh, little contention around like the iPhones. There are some issues, which we'll talk about when we get there and when we get there. But there's there's a new gate. Let's put it that way. Jelly gate. It's a thing. Uh, m more so, though, I think it's a thing people are just trying to make happen. Um, so how about we start this, though? You like you just said a, a few minutes ago, you do not like the iPad mini. So yeah. tell us your experience, how long you used it, what what don't you like about it, and what maybe you do like about so it. So I used this extensively for, let's see, came out on Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, like three or four days, uh, pretty much tried to put my iPad Pro 11-inch to the wayside and exclusively use this. And I got to say, taking it out of the box, I actually really like the form factor. I love, isn't it like an 8.3-inch display? 8.3, 8, 8 Yeah, yep. whatever the display size is. It's very nice. Obviously, build quality is super nice. Uh, it just sort of feels like a shrunken down iPad Air or even an iPad Pro, and it feels incredibly premium. I was never a huge fan of the iPad mini in the past. I had the older one, and maybe it's because the bezels are slimmer or it's because uh, there's that redesign, but I really like the hardware of this. The build quality is nice. Obviously, it's got that E50 Bionic inside, so it's fast, it's speedy. I have no issues with that. Um, and again, I guess I should say kind of my use case here. I mainly use my iPad Pro for some content creation, but mostly content consumption. I will watch videos on it. I do a lot of uh, article reading like on Reddit and on different websites, obviously scrolling through Twitter and stuff like that. And that has been kind of my main use case. But for me, I guess I'll get to the screen in a second. The first thing I got to say I didn't like was Touch ID. I had a lot of weird issues getting Touch ID initiated and getting it set up. It just wasn't liking my finger for some reason. And obviously, we've been around the block before. We know what it's like to set up a Touch ID device with the sort of raising and lowering the finger. And for some reason, it was just sort of finicky from the get-go. And I just found myself, every time I picked it up, wishing, praying, just wanting face ID to be there because I had just gotten so used to it. It was so convenient. And for it to not be there was really weird. And maybe it was because I was using it always in portrait mode that just having to put my finger up there and have to unlock was a bit annoying. So that was kind of my first impression right off the bat. Not a huge fan of touch ID. I know why they did it, but still I miss face ID. Uh, initial thoughts before we sort of get into the juicy stuff with the display. Uh, yeah. I Well, I kind of feel the same about the hardware. I absolutely love the hardware of the iPad mini, this thing. I mean, it's everything I was hoping for when when I saw it. Uh, 
I I didn't have any issues with Touch ID, although I'm kind of in the same boat where I wish it had Face ID. But uh, for me, Touch ID works perfectly fine. I actually liked the way they had the setup process, which was something I hadn't seen before. Maybe the iPad Air does this. I just didn't notice. But uh, when you set it up, you know, the, you set it up like normal in portrait mode. But then they give you the option to set up a new finger. And when you do that, they tell you to turn it. Mm-hmm. So that when you're holding it in landscape, it's the other finger. I was like, oh, that's yep. pretty smart. That's a smart way to do it so that you have both fingers. Um, I, I don't really have a problem with fa- with uh, Touch ID. I do wish it was Face ID. The thing I do have a problem with, though, and I think I'll just have to get used to it, but I, I just haven't been able to so far, is the volume buttons. I always get mm-hmm. them mixed up, which one is up and down, and then I just don't like where they are because yeah. I'm so used to holding it in a certain way. Like, like again, I, I think this is something I'm just going to have to get used to, but I don't like them there. Obviously, the reason that they are on the top instead of the side is because of the Apple Pencil, where it's a little too big, so if they put the volume buttons there, you wouldn't be able to uh, get to them. I just don't know why they didn't put them on the other side. I don't see what the <laughs> issue with that would have been. They went for the top. Is what it is. But I, I mainly uh, agree with you that the hardware is great. I didn't have as many issues with like Touch ID and stuff like that, though. Now, let's get to the screen because that's the the thing that everyone is talking about. I did not notice anything inherently wrong with the screen until we started talking about it and the internet started talking about it and now i kind of see the issues but what what are those issues i in- immediately noticed as soon as i started scrolling this weird it looked to me like a ghosting effect and i've seen it interpolated or explained in different ways some people say it's ghosting some people say it's something with the refresh, some people say it's this obviously this jelly scrolling issue, which seems to be sort of the prevailing issue, where the way that LCD displays refresh, and specifically in 60 hertz, sometimes one side of the display can refresh faster than the other or move faster than the other ever so slightly. Not enough that you would notice it looking at it, but it sort of creates this weird effect where the scrolling just looks off. And that's what I first noticed when I was scrolling through Reddit or any kind of big wall of text was that in the middle, it just seemed off. It sort of gave me a headache the way that the text was kind of going up and down. And if you look at some slow-mo videos making their way across the internet, you can sort of see this in like 240 frames per second that yes, ever so slightly, one side will refresh a little faster than the other. And there's this, there's this sort of ghosting effect where the text stays behind ever so slightly, and it just looks weird. I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of hard to explain and describe. You really have to see it with your eyes. Um, And I think it's even sort of hard to see on video. I think if you haven't held this, it's a little weird. But when you notice it and when you see it, it's very hard to unsee. And that was, personally for me, such a big deal that I had to stop using it. I couldn't use it just because I know uh, because of how I use the iPad and specifically the iPad mini, because I do so much text reading, this was going to be an issue. I also heard that it's not an issue in portrait or sorry, landscape mode. I still sort of experienced it there. So there have been a lot of different theories here. Some people say that this is an issue on all iPads. Some people say that this is just a bad batch that some people don't experience this, which maybe you can touch on. Um, And there have just been a lot of different theories on why this is an issue. We can talk about this more in a second. I'll give more thoughts, but uh, that was my initial experience. I noticed it right away. Did you notice it much at all, or do you notice it now? So, well, yeah. So I, I, I think what I was experiencing is that jelly effect, but the way I experienced it wasn't that uh, it didn't give me a headache or anything like that. It just felt like instead of running at 60 hertz, it's running at like 30. Mm-hmm. That's what it really felt like. It just felt a little janky. Um, it didn't really bother me, though. Like, I didn't get a headache. I could look at the screen. I could read it. It, it was fine. And then when I really looked for it, I, you know what I had to do to really notice it is I had to kind of blur my eyes and look at mm-hmm. the general, like, uh, the general movement of the screen. And then... I would notice this kind of like, yeah, the jello effect where like one side would be a little taller than the other. It would kind of be like a wave. Um, But again, it doesn't bother me. Now, that I think maybe goes to the point of maybe there's some that are worse than others. Mm -hmm. I know our producer, Ralph, uh, who also has the iPad mini, he was noticing it like instantly before there was anything on the uh, Internet about it. I remember him bringing it up like the screen's not good here. Um, And I was like, yeah, it looks kind of like it's low refresh. And we were kind of agreed like, yeah, it's like low refresh. And then the jelly stuff came out and we looked at it in slow mo and we're like, oh no, that's what it actually is. Here's the other thing though. 
Apple came out uh, and said that this is completely normal. They, at least at, as of now, they have said that there's nothing wrong with the screen. This is typical behavior of LCDs, which like you kind of mentioned, yes, there is the refresh jelly effect in LCDs. That's just how they work. They, they can't refresh the entire screen at the same time, so they do it in steps. But usually you never notice that because it's so close mm -hmm. to being in sync that it's not an issue. And the, and the interesting thing is I actually did a slow-mo video of the uh, Mini next to the old Mini. So this is the 6th gen. I mm -hmm. have a 4th gen. So that's very old at this point. Uh, I put them next to each other, and the older Mini does not have the issue. Um, so it's like... Okay, is it normal? Sure, maybe. Is it some batches are bad, worse than others? Oh, here's the other question, though. Is it fixable? Is this a software issue? Mm. Is it a hardware issue? Is the controller inside that controls the uh, uh, the LCD faulty? Or could Apple go in software and tweak the firmware for the different uh, uh, you know, hardware inside the screen, the controller, the display refresh and all that, and actually fix it in software. I have to imagine there is a way to at least optimize it a little better and fix it a little bit. I don't know if they can do a complete fix, though. What I find so odd about this, too, is that I have never experienced this ever, at least not at this scale, on different 60 hertz displays. On the 12 Pro, I never noticed this. And this was a 60 hertz display on other iPads, even like uh, side by side, like you had experimented with your older iPad. I've seen plenty of other iPad mini videos of the iPad mini, uh, fifth gen and sixth gen side by side. And the fifth gen is noticeably better, that there is sort of this effect there, but it's not this bad. So... That leads me to believe that something is off or weird about this. Something is abnormal. Maybe it was a bad batch of displays or display controllers. I'm not sure. And in terms of what a fix could be, I've seen a couple different theories. Some say that because Apple just flat out said, hey, this is normal behavior, that means they're not going to do anything. And there's not going to be yeah. any software update, and that is is what yeah. it is. Some have speculated that this cannot be fixed by software, that this is a hardware issue. So... I'm not sure what Apple could do. And then I saw a couple of comments on Reddit, so take it with a grain of salt, that some say that Samsung displays at 60 hertz also had this issue, but Samsung was rendering a reverse jelly scrolling to sort exactly. of combat the issue. So maybe there's a software fix here that there could be some rendering done by you know the iPad's display or whatever component that would be that would sort of uh, do the opposite of this to sort of uh, balance it all out so you wouldn't notice this uh, as bad because I don't know what it is, but I had never noticed that ever on any 60 hertz displays. Even iPhones, it was fine. So I don't know what it is about this iPad yeah. mini that is just an issue. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is the issue I've experienced on other devices. I haven't experienced on any other Apple devices, but I have noticed that jank and kind of lagginess on Android devices and other devices like a, a Windows Phone. Not Windows Phone, geez. It really went back <laughs> there. But <laughs> what's it called? The Microsoft Duo mm -hmm. had a lot of issues similar to this. Like, it felt the same to me. I'm wondering mm. if that's what the issue was. Mm. Um, I have noticed that kind of effect on other screens but not apple screens this is a first i've seen here what i've noticed on apple right. screens is sometimes like you can see that it's clearly not like 120 hertz or high refresh rate but it doesn't mm -hmm. feel broken this feels right. kind of broken um but yeah that's kind of what right. i was thinking about the the fix i think there is something apple could do to fix it the question is will they i, I have to imagine that they realize that there's something up here Will they fix it? Will they do it silently? Like, they'll just start using, like, different components inside? Who knows? I, I don't know. Right. But luckily for me, it doesn't bother me. I don't get a headache. I, I notice it when I'm looking for it, but I can easily forget about it. So I'm still happy with this iPad mini. You, on the other hand, not so much. Yeah, I, I also – there's a good point there to be made, and we'll talk about this more with uh, 13 Pro, is I definitely feel like I took for granted the 120 hertz on the iPad Pro because – at first, I thought it was just weird that I was like, oh, maybe this is just me having to realize 60 hertz because I was so yeah. used to that fluidity. Yeah. But no, nah, this is something different because, again, I went back and I was using my wife's 12 yesterday. And I'm like, yeah, this is a perfectly fine, fast 60 hertz display. There's something with the display that's weird. So I would say that you really have to try your luck with these. I would first try to go into the store and see if you could play with one first to see if that bothers you or buy one. And then if you don't like it, return it. Uh, 
like Matt and I kind of speculate here, there might be some batches that are better better than others, so maybe you would get a better display. But uh, for me, and I know many other people, it's bad enough that it really sort of just ruins the experience. So you kind of have to um, test this out for yourself, see if it's an issue. I guess if you even if you have this issue, but you do a lot of content consumption, like you watch a lot of movies and you're kind of in apps, then as long as it's not text, it doesn't seem to be an issue. And even in landscape mode, it's supposedly better than portrait mode. It's just really, if you read a lot of texts or... Um, I guess specifically if you're scrolling through text, that's where it's a, it's an issue. If you're just kind of reading an ebook or you're sort of just sort of reading very, um, I don't know, static web pages, like as long as you're not scrolling, it's not an issue. But if you do a lot of scrolling and swiping around, that's where you start to notice it. So Matt, do you recommend a buy on this or a purchase? Do you think people should be hesitant or do you think that this is a, an, uh, an issue blown out of proportion and that will die off in the next couple of weeks? Uh, I think the last part, I think this is blown out of proportion and it will die out the last couple of weeks or in a few weeks. Um, but at the same time, it is something it's real. I can see it on my own iPad mini. Um, but like you said, it really just depends if you personally will notice it. So get it in your hands, try it out. If you buy one and you hate the screen then return it, right? I mean, no harm, no foul. Um, so, but at the same time, I really hope that, Something is done about it, whether that's secretly or uh, just publicly. I yeah. highly doubt they'll come out publicly and say anything about it, but hopefully they fix it. And I will say, besides that, it's really nice. I mean, like I said, the hardware is really nice. I really love just sort of taking this around with me from room to room, grabbing it and picking it yeah, up. That's what I've been doing. It's, yeah. it's tough because it's very easy to get into this mindset, well... I need an iPad mini, and then I need an iPad Pro for this, and then an iPad Pro for that. And I know you're living the multi-iPad oh. lifestyle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and in this case, that's, I mean, it, there's something about – that was always the sort of the illusion and the dream of the iPad is it's in between a large display and it's in between the phone that it's something right in the middle. And it just – this is so easy just to pick up and read. I think that if you're, like, wanting an e-reader, like, you don't want a Kindle. And I know there are people out there who don't want a Kindle. And they don't want a larger sort of 10.9 inch or 11 iPad or iPad Pro. They want something in between. This is like the perfect reading companion. This is like the perfect size. And the hardware is really nice. Um, and I think that uh, it's really nice to see Apple sort of uh, breathe new life into the iPad mini. And um, if you can get past the display issues, then I certainly would recommend, this. especially if you sort of want this form factor, it is nice. Though, again, you are definitely paying a, uh, a premium for that form factor. And I know we kind of speculated this about, uh, about this before, but if Apple could sort of somehow move the iPad mini into the lowest iPad tier slot in terms of price, if this was... Three ninety nine or three forty nine or let's just go crazy and say two ninety nine or even just three twenty nine, anywhere in that three hundred ballpark range, I'd probably pick this up just to have because that would make it uh, just one of those things that is just worth it for the price. Five hundred bucks, you have to sort of stop and think a little bit if you really are going to use this or not. Yeah, exactly. Plus, five hundred bucks is for the sixty four gigabyte mm -hmm. version, so you're probably gonna want to get a little bit bigger. And the only other option is two fifty six. And at that point, you're at like what is that six fifty? If you want LTE, which I don't think most people need, or I guess it's five G at this point. I don't think most people necessarily need that, but that's the one I have. This is a two fifty six five G. That is seven ninety nine for an iPad Mini. I think that's the same price as the 11 inch iPad pro. If not, it's like a hundred dollars difference. So yeah. that's a tough one, especially with, okay, let's just say you get the base model iPad mini a hundred dollars more. You get the iPad air. That is a, uh, I mean, they're basically the same devices. They do the same things. Uh, one's just bigger, one's smaller. So it's like, it, it's a tough, it's a tough sell. I'm still interested to see how many people actually buy these and how popular they are. I'm still of the opinion that not very many people are going to buy these. Um, that the, when, especially when you have them in the store next to each other, they see that price. They see they can either one get a $329 iPad with a bigger screen, which to uh, I think you know, quote unquote, normal people, they're not going to care about the design as much. Right. They're not going to care about that kind of stuff. Like it's perfectly fine for them. Especially like for me, you know, the biggest deal breaker with that uh, base uh, model iPad is the non-laminated screen. Mm -hmm. That is a killer for me. I can't deal with that. But no one really cares about that kind of stuff. Like they'll gladly save the money if it means they can have, uh, you know, a couple hundred dollars extra in their pocket. Or they'll see the iPad 
Air, which in, for all intents and purposes looks the same as this. It just yeah. has a bigger screen. And that seems like a better value just mentally. Like it's bigger. It's got a bigger screen. It's only $100 more. Like, yeah, I, I'm interested to see long term how many people buy this. Although I hope people buy it because I love this thing and I want it to stay around. I just have no idea if it will. We had our unnamed commenter who also commented back and said that, um, you know, the iPad mini probably doesn't appeal to me either based on the size. Pro Max on the phone appeals to me because the base iPad, you know, works as well. Appreciate that they went big on iPad updates this year, but yes, don't see the iPad mini for me. And I think that is the same um, sort of uh, thought and belief shared by many. Nice to see it. Obviously, nice to see Apple sort of continue to sort of put some innovation into some products that are very much in need of an update. But I agree with you, Matt. I don't know how well this is going to sell. And um, I would expect this to be sort of the last hoorah for the iPad mini until two or three, four years from now when sort of it just kind of goes away. Because I don't think it's going to last forever. And this is probably the last uh, big update it will probably re be uh, receiving. But maybe, maybe we're wrong. We'll see. Maybe well, this, will I be think, a, this will be a killer. Yeah, maybe this is going to blow it out of the water and they're going to just keep making this forever. Updates every year like every other iPad. But I think this is kind of the, the, the holdover until they get that folding iPhone. Yep. Because they're obviously working on it. We, it's a few years out. This can easily hold over people who want this size of device until that happens. Um, but at the same time, if they do a folding iPhone, one of the things I actually love about this, the fact that it's an iPad is it has the iPad software. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people have com been complaining about iOS or iPad OS 15 on this size of display, which I totally understand. Like the padding on here is kind of crazy. Um, but I've gone through and kind of optimized it for mini lifestyle instead of using it. Like I didn't uh, do a backup restore of like my iPad pro for instance, because my 12.9 inch setup is completely different than a, 8.3 inch setup so i set this up right. i made the icons bigger i uh deleted some of the widgets that i just didn't need uh, i use this much more like a tablet and that i think has made my experience much better but i love having the ipad apps so if they eventually do a iphone uh, that is foldable that kind of expands to this size basically fold this in half what are they going to do about the software is it going to run iphone os or i guess ios they should really go back to iphone os at this point <laughs> ios when it's closed and open up to ipad os when it's open highly doubt it but i love having ipad uh, os software here yeah there are a lot of questions to answer there yeah I, I love the ipad os software experience too and a lot of the gripes people have can obviously be fixed by software updates that's something not uh, with the screen but definitely with ipad os so that can be fixed and scaled and tweaked so i'm not worried about that um but yeah that folding iphone is definitely coming if it's anything around that size, I forgot what the last uh, estimate was for the screen size. I think it was eight point two. I think it was about eight something. Inch. It's like exactly. If it's that yeah, size, the same as the uh, fold that Samsung. That's used. a winner. That iPad Mini form factor is a winner. So uh, a lot of good stuff about the iPad Mini. It just you got to be careful about the display. But besides that, um, I like it. But I will say not for me. I, yeah, I will say. Just try to forget. If you're thinking about getting an iPad mini, try to forget about the screen. Pick it up. Use it. If it bothers you off the bat, okay, then you go. You know you have a problem. But if you're in the the mindset that this is going to be a bad screen, you might make it worse than it is in your head. So just try to forget about it if you're interested in one. And if you still don't like it, great. Turn it. Get something else. But I don't know. I, I'm happy about the iPad mini. But should we uh, get into iPhones? Because yeah, uh, there's a lot of new iPhones out. <laughs> I mean, speaking of screens, let's talk about the displays on the 13 Pro and Pro Max. We can talk about all the models, but I got to say, I was a skeptic about ProMotion. I never saw the appeal on, well, it was nice to have on the iPad Pro. Don't get me wrong. And especially after trying to go with the 60 hertz on the iPad Mini, I definitely noticed it. Um, but it was one of those things, and we talked about this before, after a couple of days, it just sort of became whatever. It was nice to see there. It was, you know, it was nice, but I don't think it was sort of changing the game or anything like that. And I had experienced 120 hertz on Android phones before, and those were nice as well, but it was just, it was fine. It was what it was. And I feel like Apple putting ProMotion on the iPhone was sort of just them checking a box. Say, okay, now we have 120 hertz. You can stop complaining about it. We've got it on the iPhone. I thought that that's just... Um, kind of the big story for this year's iPhone. But I got to say, after using it for the first time, and now almost a week later, 
that experience of excitement and euphoria with how fast it feels that has not gotten away. I love ProMotion on uh, the iPhone. I love Apple's implementation. And now I cannot go back to 60 hertz. Even though 60 hertz is still very smooth on the 13 and 13 mini, there's something about that 120 hertz that is just so special. I know you had the same feeling, Matt, uh, when you first kind of got it out of the box and opened it up. What was kind of those first uh, couple of minutes like for you? So, yeah, seeing it on this display, the 120 hertz was great. I love it having it in this size of phone. I think that's part of what makes it look so much more smooth is how mm-hmm. small this these phones are. Mm-hmm. Because, you you know, when you get a Samsung phone, they're they're pretty big. So it's like the 120 hertz effect is there, but I don't know why. It just Maybe it's the bigger screens that make it kind of go away from me. Right. Um, I will say, though, the effect, I still see it, but it's it's the same as the iPad for me. Like It, really? it has quickly it has quickly faded. Uh, that doesn't mean I wish it wasn't there. I'm happy it's there, but I, I only see it on on very select animations, especially like if I haven't been on my phone for a while and I pick it up, I'll be like, oh, that was nice. But then as soon as I start using it, it kind of goes away. Um, I like the actual quality of the screen, though. They did some updates to it this year. Uh, it is brighter, right? I'm trying to look up the specs here. I'm pretty sure yes, it gets I think it brighter. Does get a little bit brighter. Um, yeah, because they updated the regular 13 to 800 nits of brightness, which I think the Pro used to be. I believe so. So the Pro is now a thousand nits of brightness yep. sustained, which is great. Uh, I'm one of those people. I don't. I think I'm rare in this case, but I keep my phone at 100 percent like all the time. <laughs> Killing your eyes, uh, unless it's. Well, not during the day. At night, I don't do it to 100%. But like during the day, right here in the office, I got... Look at that. It's even exposed properly. No, I'm, at you like, gotta have it at, I'm at like 50% here. Yeah. So when you when I put it at full, I even to this day, every time I open the screen, I realize like, dang, this, this screen is very bright and vibrant. Um, I like it. I like the screen a lot. It is probably... Hmm, aside from camera, it's definitely my favorite feature. You know what's funny? The notch, it's like unnoticeable. Oh, completely. You instantly forget about it. There's no, like, I don't understand why Apple went through the the lengths to change it. I, I don't I don't know why. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And you know what? If the rumors are true for next year and if the notch is supposed to get uh, radically smaller and go to that hole punch design, personally, I think feel like Apple just should have waited another year and just went from the current notch down a, uh, a bit to the smaller notch just because this 20% smaller notch is so insignificant and so forgettable that I feel like it was maybe, maybe that was one of the reasons why they glanced through it so fast at the event, just because it doesn't really seem to matter. I immediately noticed promotion and I didn't care at all about the notch. And not that I noticed the notch so much before, but I feel like Really, what is the point of making that notch any smaller? Because I feel like the only way we're going to notice a difference is when the notch goes away, or at least goes to a hole punch. Exactly. Um, yeah. And as it stands right now, it's just kind of, you know, that's one of the most forgettable moments about this phone. It's nice that it was changed, and I'm glad it's smaller, but really could care less about it now, especially because there are so many other features. Uh, the smaller notch, I could take it or leave it, honestly. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty much the same way. What about the camera? The camera system on the pros, especially. Well, we'll I think we'll talk about the 13 in a little bit, but we're, we're, we use the pros every day as our main right. phone. So the camera system, you're not much of a, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't care so much about the camera. Like you want it no. to be nice, but you're not super worried about it being like the highest quality. Right. As long as I can shoot good photos and decent 4K video, that's all I care about. And that's where it's been good. Uh, and I guess you can speak to it more than I can, but I'll say kind of my initial impressions. I noticed that the natural bokeh of the main lens was almost better. Like the depth of field on subjects was naturally better non portrait mode than it has been in the past. And um, night mode shots are better as well. It's not astrophotography mode or anything, but night mode shots are better. You can get more light into those sensors and those looked, you know, nicer than they did last year. Um, And just kind of generally speaking, like photos and videos, they look great. They look fantastic. Um, I'm not much of a macro photo connoisseur, so I don't really care about that so much. (laughs) I hate the auto switching drives me nuts. So I know that there's an update coming to that, so that should uh, fix that. But um, you share more of your experience. Generally speaking, I'm very happy. Great cameras, but you've probably put them through their paces much more than I have in the past couple of days. Yeah, I I use this camera a lot in the past few days to test, and I absolutely love it. It's by far the best camera on any phone right now. No, I don't think there's a debate about it. 
Um, we'll see what the Pixel 6 does, but it's going to be tough to compete. Um, so, yeah, the the actual sensor and the main camera is larger, and it has larger pixels. So that's what's contributing to... Oh, and it also has a, a lower aperture, f1.5 now. So that's what's contributing mm-hmm. to the natural blur, which I definitely noticed as well. Makes it look much nicer just out of the bat like you it looks like a higher end camera not in every situation but in in some situations it really it's noticeable i like the macro photography mode as well although i don't think i'm really ever going to use it that often the auto switching i actually loved because i hate going in and like changing settings when i need to do it i like that i i'm like oh macro and i just like point it and it works I guess the reason people don't like it is because it's like switching to a different camera for you. Is that, like, what's the reason you don't like that? It's the switching to the other camera for me and it reframes the shot a little bit, which just drives me nuts. Like it's just, it's like, I don't want to take a macro shot and just kind of switching for me. I'd like to have manual control, which again, Apple should be releasing an update that gives you that manual control. Yeah. Maybe they'll give you an auto mode or a manual mode. Um, but that was sort of like, it just was a little too jarring for me. It felt a little choppy and that's what I didn't like about it. Yeah, I guess for me, the reason it didn't bother me is because once you get to the point where it switches, you can't focus anymore anyway. Yeah. So it's like, like what else am I supposed to do here? Um, what else? What else is there? The three times. Have, I don't yeah, know how much of a telephoto you are. A little bit. You know what? It's noticeable. It is nice to have that little extra reach. When I was doing some side by side with the 12 Pro and the 13 Pro, 3X was nice to have. Obviously, now, correct me if I'm wrong, 3X was there last year, right? On the Max. No. It's 2.5. No. Okay, never mind. So yeah. 3X across the board, that's really nice to have. Um, I don't use the telephone all that much, but the little extra reach is nice to see. Yeah, and then... So I think from a photography standpoint, best camera in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, same thing for video, but cinematic mode. Yeah. You... I, well, both of us aren't really ever going to use this feature. No. I am much more impressed with it than I think you are. I have seen some really excellent tests, uh, especially outdoors. People kind of comparing it to like vlogging rigs or like little, you know, little point and shoots or even uh, DSLRs, like to kind of get that depth of field. And in some cases, it looks really good. In other cases, it just falls apart. I can't see myself using it all that much. I mean, maybe there's some like selfie scenarios where you want that, but for us, especially. The big thing for us is product videography. Like usually we're shooting like B-roll of like a phone, for example. And in that case, cinematic mode just, it's not going to work that well. I think not only is this supposed to, I think, more focus on the human face than it is a product, Mm. though it works on products, but also just it, at that level, it just sort of looks unnatural. So I'm glad that it's there. I'm sure it will get better with software updates. To me, it feels a little bit more gimmicky than anything else. Um, and the examples I've seen have been very hit or miss. I've seen some that have been very impressive and like, Hey, I could go out and, you know, shoot a little, uh, vlog if I wanted to, and just use this. And probably no one could tell for the most part that it wasn't on like some a 6400 or some Canon M50 or whatever sort of the lower end DSLRs are. Uh, and then in other instances, it just kind of looks like garbage. So what are your thoughts on this? Yeah. I mean, I pretty much agree with that. It's, it's more so I'm impressed that it isn't complete garbage. Like I was expecting it to, you have to have like a film crew and then with perfect lighting and then, then it will work, but no, it works pretty well. Most of the time I will say though, in order to get the best results out of this, and I think most people have said this and it's definitely true. You have to go in and edit after the fact Mm -hmm. it, uh, the blur right out of the camera is a little too strong. Mm-hmm. It looks a little unnatural. Yep. And the issue with that blur is that it actually starts to blur the line between what should be blurred and isn't blurred. And once you take that down, so for instance, mm-hmm. most of the time it's in like F2 or, or F2.8, around that, around that range. If you go in and I've actually found you have to go all the way up to like F9 and it looks great after that. Like the, the edges are less <laughs> distracting because it the blur between them is a little bit more natural. The only time I really noticed where it does a bad, like really bad job is when you have a lot of little textures that you're trying to blur out. So for instance, I have this shot that I did of a rock climber. They were rappelling down. It was focused on them, and they were actually pretty far. I was using the three times telephoto with cinematic mode. They were pretty far away. Blurred them out beautifully. Blurred the plant in front of me that was that I was trying to get blurred beautifully. But some mm-hmm. of the little leaves were sticking up, and it like 
the there was like a line where it was blurred and then some leaves up above that were not blurred. Um, so it's like you can tell if you're looking at it. The other thing is it really depends where you're watching these f- videos back on. If you're watching it on like an iPad yeah. or a or a TV screen or your computer, you're gonna see all those edges. But if you watch it arms length, like like not mm. arms length, like like holding it out, but I mean like just normal on your phone, it looks surprisingly good. Like it looks like it's a regular camera. So yeah, I'm more excited yeah. to see what this does in the next few years. I always like to compare it to the original portrait mode, which had very much the same issues as we're seeing now with the video. So I'm sure in a few years, it's gonna be pretty great. But on the other hand, I don't know when I'm ever going to use this. <laughs> it's nice to have. I think what's so cool about it, too, is I got to give Apple kudos. To have this on the 13 Mini and the 13 is That's true. really yeah. cool to see. And I've seen some people, especially more this year than others, people are like, okay, because of cinematic video mode and because of the cameras, I might just buy a 13 Mini just as like a little camera just to have that'll take photos and videos. And the iPhones have gotten that good that not only do they have great cameras and um, not only is the processing much better, but on the video side, they're, you know, let's be honest here. Android phones don't shoot as good videos as iPhones do. And the 13 uh, series definitely does it better and better. And now with cinematic mode and, you know, updates to that and uh, seeing that get improved over time, I could definitely see uh, having one of these as just a camera. Maybe if you... Uh, obviously there's many people who just shoot on their phones just because that's one less device they have to buy and it's going to look great. But if you wanted like a little camera that's portable and you just kind of want to have it, um, something to take great photos and videos, maybe not a bad idea to buy a 13 mini just to have as that camera, just because it really is that good. A little crazy. Don't have to do it. But I think regardless of that, even if you're not uh, at that level, just having this in your pocket uh, is giving you a really great versatile camera system that takes great photos and videos in basically every uh, instance. And, you know, telephoto lens, I could take it or leave it. Um, So even if you get a 13 or 13 mini, you're taking some great photos and you've got cinematic mode as well. So there you go. Yeah, definitely. The cameras are a home run, I think, this year. Much bigger updates than I was expecting, to Mm -hmm. be honest. Um, what about, let's see, I'm trying to think of other stuff. A15 processor is yeah, fine. I don't even notice it. always fast. Um, yeah. Uh, what about battery life? Have you noticed uh, an improvement? The battery life has been really good for me. Uh, it's always one of those things, I feel like every year when you first get the phone, it's always amazing, and then it just degrades over time, which I think has to do with, obviously, battery degradation and how the batteries and software work together. And I feel like iOS 15, because they're like built with these phones in mind, they are like tip-top optimized for every little thing on these phones then as the year progresses and we get updates they become a little bit more and more power hungry and consuming uh so as of right now all that to say the battery life is really good i have had no problems i do a lot of personal hot spotting a lot of photos and videos uh, and everything has been really good and i have no complaints i can usually get through a full day with double digits of battery percentage remaining and even after a lot of heavy use so no complaints yeah, that's pretty much how I feel too. With the way I, I'm coming from the uh, 12 Pro Max, so the battery should have been better than what I'm experiencing now. Although I feel like it's not very different, which is a good thing because I'm using the regular 13 Pro, not the Max. So the fact that the battery feels the same as my Max before that, that's all I was hoping for. Uh, it seems great. Now, okay, I, th- I think, I'm trying to think, I think that's all the features that are new. Um, it's, did you yeah. have any issues? Did you have any issues? Uh, no issues I can think of. I got everything set up okay. I've had no issues with the display. I just saw uh, an article this morning about uh, there's some touch issues. Did you experience those touch issues on your phone? Yeah, I know that there's yeah. there's people who have had, uh, had those issues. So not, I've had, you know, maybe this we're having uh, inverse experiences here with different Apple products because you had a great iPad mini experience. <laughs> I had a yeah. horrible one. I've had no issues with touch on this. What have been those issues with your display on your 13 Pro? So... Yeah, so the way I, I'm not going to say these are horrible issues, and they're clearly software issues. It's not a it's not a um, hardware issue. I, I don't think at least. Um, basically, sometimes it feels like I have to actually press into the screen to get it to respond. So like I'll go to let's say press play on a YouTube video, and it just like my light tap doesn't do anything. So I have to really focus and like click on it. Um, or if I'm trying to swipe back, sometimes it just doesn't register. It doesn't happen every single time. It actually feels like it's gotten a little better 
maybe i don't know what's happened necessarily like i haven't had any updates or anything so i don't know how it could have gotten better um it's not a huge deal i don't think this is a it's clearly a software thing they're going to release a patch for it um another issue i know a lot of people were having is not necessarily the iphone 13 this is clearly an ios 15 issue is apple watch issues mm, yep uh, some people can't even get theirs to connect other people it's just unlocking with the mask that seems to just not work the watch can't communicate back and forth have you noticed that yeah, I, I had a weird issue as I got the phone out uh, of the box in the store. I was doing a, a trade-in of my 12 Pro, so I kind of like had like the phones on the table, and I had my Apple Watch, and I went through the process of sort of trying to unpair the Apple Watch and pair it to the new one, and the watch was sort of freaking out with the new one. Like It kept popping up like, um, oh, do you want to pair with the 13 Pro? Then it'd go away, and it took me a couple of restarts of the Apple Watch to get it back to like a certain state. Then it was recognized by the 13 Pro, and then it would uh, pair, and then I've had the issue that it seems like everybody's having where the face unlock just doesn't work with the mask that the apple watch works but the facial unlock with the mask doesn't work i've also had weird issues and i've seen this reported as well not sure if this is an apple watch issue or an ios 15 issue i'm missing notifications for some reason like notifications come in and i'm not getting buzzed or pinged on the apple watch and i don't know if you've had that issue but um i know apple insider did an article on it and I got to see what their recommended fixes are because I swore I am missing texts and telegram notifications because my watch is not going off. So there's definitely something weird between the Apple Watch and the iPhone 13 series, some kind of bug that hopefully gets straightened out. I think uh, some were saying that a uh, beta version of iOS 15 fixes it. So hopefully help is on the way and a patch is on the way. But uh, it's usable, but it's not perfect as of right now. Yeah, I haven't. I, I took me forever to I had to just do a full reset of my watch to get it to connect to my iphone every year i'm like man this is gonna be the year it's just gonna transfer over to the new phone never no does. problems never. it never ever works so that was the only issue i've had um i haven't had a chance to experience the other issues people are having so eh, it's fine for me I, i'm getting all the notifications everything's fine um i'm trying to think of any other issues there were a few issues i had that i figured out were my fault so i'm not even gonna get into them um yeah, no, everything's been pretty smooth. iOS 15 has its bugs. It seems like it's a little bit buggier of a year than typical, um, but so far it's it's been relatively fine, and I'm just really liking this hardware. I said we were going to talk about the 13s, but the more I, I think about it, there's not much to talk about. <laughs> like, the screen is better because it's brighter now, but kind of a question for you after using all these devices and playing with them obviously we talked a whole lot about this for the past couple of weeks but have the iphone 13 is a minor upgrade that if you have a 12 you don't need to upgrade and we've kind of gone through this multiple times has your opinion now changed since you've used the the devices um do you think that someone who has an older device should upgrade like do you think that it's a bigger update than we thought or do you think we're right in line and if you have a 12 there really is just no reason to jump through the hoops and pay the money to upgrade there's just it's just not there so if you're going from a 12 and you're thinking of getting a 13 not a 13 pro but a 13 absolutely not you're unless like for whatever reason you're dying to get that cinematic mode <laughs> which which I would advise not upgrading because of that yeah. I would save your money and just buy like a camera <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, there's nothing about this phone in my experience that is in any way worth the money over the 12. Now, if you're coming from the 11, mm-hmm. the typical stuff, 11, anything older than yeah. that, then there's an argument to be made, but this phone feels so similar to the 12. Now, the reason I would say upgrade is one, you have a 12 and you're looking to get a pro or you're looking to get a mini. You mm-hmm. want to try a different form factor that I can totally understand, and that makes a lot of sense. Um, but if you're going from 13 or 12 to 13 or 12 mini to 13 mini, you're not going to notice a huge difference. I'd say either one, spend a little more and go for the pro. You'll notice a huge difference there, I think, personally. Um, or wait it out. Buy yourself a camera if you're really looking for those new camera features. But that being said... Not a bad phone at all. This thing performs extremely well. Not a huge fan of the colors this year. I, I'm just not feeling them. Yeah. The new blue is kind of, I mean, it's nice, but it's a little too muted for my liking. The other colors in the line are kind of uninspired in my opinion, but it's a good phone. It's a great phone even, just not one that I'd necessarily say you need to upgrade to. 
Yeah, I, it's exactly the same sort of sentiment here on this end. If you have an older phone, then obviously there's a reason to upgrade. If you sort of have a uh, sluggish performer or the battery life isn't great, then you'll be happy. But if you have a 12, there is just no reason to upgrade. And even if you have a 12 Pro, maybe the 120 hertz, but I just, I don't think there's enough in here to make it uh, worthy the upgrade. There's no like one feature that's like, oh, you got to have that. It's worth the upgrade. It's worth the money. Um, if you have something older, maybe, but um, I don't know. It's just kind of, it's what we expected. It's nice to see. If you're an enthusiast who wants the new phone every year, you're probably going to be happy with it. It's the latest and greatest iPhone, but uh, it's, I don't know. It just, the story of the iPhone this year is, is, is certainly an S year. It is certainly a year of refinements and improvements. And there is nothing here that is uh, breathtaking about it. Um, but at the same time, if you have an older iPhone, you're probably going to be very happy and certainly enjoy kind of what the 13 line has to offer. Yeah, totally agree. I will say, for whatever reason, I love this phone more than I was expecting to. Maybe it's because it's smaller. I was really dreading having that big screen on the Max. Yeah. Maybe it's because it's finally I have the smaller phone with all the same features and even better features now that I really love it. But I was not expecting to care about this upgrade very much. I'm on the upgrade program, so that's why I got it, because I'm paying for it anyway. So like, I'm going to get the new phone. Plus, this is my job, so I'm going to do it. Um, but I actually really like it. A yeah. few, I don't know, there's not that much else to say, but as I'm looking at my phone, one thing I noticed, did you notice that the buttons on the side are actually lower than they used to be? You know, I had seen that like in side-by-side -side comparisons, but actually using it, I had noticed it not at all. It's not noticeable at all, just like the notch. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's because I'm coming from the Max, but I actually noticed that a lot. Really? And I, I, like, I like it a lot. Um, I'm trying to like think of, as I look at this, other things. Oh, another thing I noticed, the speakers are noticeably better. Or louder, at least. I don't know if they're better quality, but they're louder. Did you notice that? A little bit. I don't listen to a whole lot of stuff through the speakers on my phone. I was realized that the other day, too, is I feel like my watch is always on silent mode, and my phone is always on uh, silent mode, too, just with the vibration motor only. I feel like I never listen to anything with the speaker on, and it's always a little, oh, and I, as I turn on the flashlight, it's always a little jarring <laughs> having the speaker on on my Apple Watch because... I'm just not used to those dings at all. So maybe <laughs> I just am not the use case for that. I'm not the target audience, but uh, I, I don't know. It's it's their phone speakers. So like they're only yeah, as they're not good as you'd great. expect, they but just, I guess they're a little yeah. bit better. So if you do uh, listen to a lot of music or podcasts through there, you probably will notice it. And it's kind of nice to see. I mean, I, I will never turn down a better feature. So nice exactly. to see it there. Is there anything else that I'm, I feel like? <sighs> I don't Not I really. Just, I that mean, was the story this year is just... It was just, it was smaller stuff. I guess I always thought I'd notice the notch a lot more than I did, and I didn't. Um, no. Nah, promotion is nice. I guess, kind of speaking of upgrades and when it's worth it or not, we did get a question from Apple Circle superfan Brad, who is, he's been with us. Man, Brad, you've been listening for years. Thank you. Forever, every every yeah. iteration. We appreciate you, Brad. He asked a really good question. First off, Matt, he did agree with me about the Series 7. Something was weird about that. Yeah. So just want to say, something's up. Thank you. I agree. Agree with the uh, theories there. <laughs> and he asks, as a new Apple Watch uh, owner and user, would you suggest waiting for the 7 or should I pick up a discounted 6 if I can find a good deal on it now? That is an excellent question. And if you don't have an Apple Watch right now, oof, that's a tough, tough thing to say. Uh, I would say that if you don't care about the larger screen size... And if you can find a good deal, because I know there are very good deals to be had on the 6, I would probably save the money and go with the 6. Uh, there is just nothing besides the larger display that you're going to notice. And if you don't need a millimeter larger or a millimeter, yeah, they're, they're both a millimeter larger. Yeah. So if you don't need that uh, and you can find a good deal, then I think by all means save the money and go with the 6. What do you think, Matt? I mainly agree, although I would say unless you find like a killer deal right now, I would still wait until the seven's out because you will probably get an even better deal when this, when the seven is already out and right. then you can get backlogs of the six. Also, did he say, I think you said this, but he doesn't have an Apple watch. Now. New, he says new Apple watch user. So then definitely wait. Like you yeah. don't have one now. You're not missing. <laughs> like wait and just see what the deals are. Maybe you can even get it bundled with something else. I know they do Apple watch bundles every once in a while. Like there's, there's a lot of deals to be had, especially once the new one's actually out. And who knows, maybe you'll see the seven. You'll be like, man, this is what I really wanted. Um, yeah. And you'll compare it to the six and you'd be like, yeah, that's the way to go. Uh, if you don't have an Apple watch now, wait, 
if you do have one and you're looking to upgrade and you're like, you know what, the seven is not talking to me, it's not speaking to me, then see if, yeah, see if you can find a good deal on a six because, I mean, you're not going to be missing out on much, like you said. Seems, I mean, I, I'll, I'll still be interested to see how big the screen actually is because, mm-hmm. like, when you say one millimeter difference, like, that sounds like nothing. But then when you look at how small these screens are, one millimeter could actually make a big amount of change. Mm-hmm. But it's just so hard to know. Like, the renders look great, but, I mean, <laughs> those are renders, so who knows? <laughs> Here's one question for you, Matt, too, is we kind of – let me backtrack a little bit and talk about – well, I guess – Backtrack and also look forward. So we're expecting one more fall event uh, before the end of the year, probably going to show off new Macs and stuff like that. And I had an Apple Circle video go up today that talks about certain parts of the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro that maybe give us a glimpse as I turn on the flashlight again. What is there? I always do that. Uh, a glimpse <laughs> of what this phone and what this hardware tells us about other Apple products. And one of the things I speculate on in that video is what else could get the ProMotion treatment? Because the iPhone 13 Pro has it, the iPad Pros have it. Does it make sense for the MacBook Pro to have it? We've heard no concrete evidence that it's going to come. I guess really one way or the other. I guess really Apple could sort of just drop it in there because there really wouldn't be any special hardware required in theory to do this. Uh, Do you think that it makes sense to see a pro motion on a MacBook Pro? Why or why not? Would you would you like to see it? I would definitely like to see it. And I think there's a lot of precedent that they would do that. They have it in the iPad Pro. They have it in the iPhones now. Why wouldn't their top end laptop have the same thing? And we've also seen other laptops, like many other laptops, have Mm -hmm. 120 hertz displays. Yeah, I, I don't think there would be a reason they couldn't do it. It would really just be the typical Apple thing. Like, they're just not ready to do it for whatever reason. But if there was a perfect time to do it, this would be it. Show off what that M1X can do. Show Mm -hmm. off what that M2 can do. Like, look at this. It's still super fast, and you have a high refresh rate display and all the other things that they're probably going to put into it. Although, let's say this, though. Let's say there was only room for one thing. That, the 120 hertz display, ProMotion, or Face ID. Which would you take? Well... I would take Face ID in a heartbeat, but I know it's not going to happen. So I yeah, think we have, it's not going to happen. I think there's a better <laughs> shot of seeing promotion than there is Face ID. And the two big reasons why I think this would be possible to do is one, we have mini LED displays with promotion on the iPad. That that is a 12.9 yep. inch iPad Pro with mini LED. The 14 inch and 16 inch models will also have mini LED displays. So the precedent is sort of there that this is possible to do. The other thing which I think that we often forget about, and I kind of forgot about it until I did some research and kind of had to remind myself, is that ProMotion is a very wide-ranging definition of 120 hertz because ProMotion means up to 120 hertz, but also down to like 10 hertz or whatever it is, that it's a very wide professional motion range that it can go into. And I think that one of the things we don't see, oh, maybe, I, you know, like I said, we don't see it because I'm sure some Windows laptop has it. But the big benefit of this would be <laughs> the variable ramping up and ramping down that if you needed 120 hertz, it would ramp up to that and make things faster. But if you're just reading a web page or watching a 24 frames per second video, it would go down to match that. And I feel like that would be great for battery life and efficiency, right? Doesn't Wouldn't that make a whole lot of sense and even make battery life better on the M1X? Oh, yeah, definitely. There's no reason why they wouldn't. If they do promotion every time they've ever done it, which is, I guess, only twice, it does that variable refresh. That's... That's why they don't just call it, oh, fast refresh rate. It's ProMotion's branded because of the ability to change, which I guess if I think about it, like pretty much every other phone with variable refresh rate does the same thing, but whatever. Yeah, I think it's – well, I guess yeah, it did pins, yeah. Yeah, some I feel like – and again, I could be wrong on this. Aren't some like normally locked into one mode? Like you can only use 60 hertz mode or you can only use 120 hertz mode. And even like on these crazy uh, laptops, 144 hertz – uh, 120 hertz, you know, whatever, like over 200 hertz, they're locked to that typically, right? Like you have to use it in one yeah. hertz mode. I guess I was thinking, yeah, I guess I was thinking phones, but yeah, in laptops, I'm pretty sure you have, you can choose different ones, but you have to stick to that. It doesn't variably change it. Um, I would like to see this. I, I, It's not something that I think I care that much about, but who knows? Maybe it's the same thing as the phone where like, I don't care that much. And then I see it and I'm like, man, this is awesome. Um, is there anything else that you'd rather see, or not? Maybe not rather see, but that you really hope we see before the end of the year? It's well, M1X MacBook Pros—they've got to come. They've been rumored forever. 
Um, AirPods 3, I think, are a shoe in for the end of the year. And then there have been some rumors, I'd love to see it personally, the M1X Mac Mini. Um, I think hmm. that this event does have room for, well, I guess if you're counting the MacBook Pro these two models, three M1X machines, or basically two types of machines, the new MacBook Pro's M1X, and I feel like we could also see another M1X uh, device, and that Mac Mini makes a whole lot of sense. So that would be cool to see. So I think uh, MacBook Pro's, AirPods, maybe Mac Mini, I think that's how we end the year before the year is up. There have been rumors about a new iPhone SE, but I think that's going to be early 2022. So uh, what else would you like to see uh, before the uh, year wraps up? Yeah, I don't think there's any rumors about this. I want to see that M1, or I guess, I'm getting so confused with these M chips, but the the next generation M chip in a pro-level iMac. Mm -hmm. There's not really any rumors of that happening anytime soon, but I really want that. I think we're all expecting that to happen at some point, but that'll probably come alongside the Mac Pro whenever they finally release that version. Right. I guess, yeah, do you think they're going to update the the Mac Mini already? Like, <sighs> well, after a year? This, I mean, it's been a year, I guess. Here's so, what's confusing yeah. about it, is we're hearing that there's going to be a refreshed MacBook Air and a refreshed Mac Mini, and these devices just got M1. So would it make more sense to do the rest of the line for some new M chips? Yeah. Uh, from what I've heard, and there's some, been some theories about this, that there's going to be a higher end model and a lower end model. So maybe this doesn't replace the M1 mm, Mac Mini, but this is an M1X higher end version, which does seem kind of weird because there's a new design. And it definitely doesn't seem to make sense. Basically, if that was true, then we'd have a... Are we going to have a low-cost MacBook Air, then a higher-end MacBook Air, then a low-cost Mac Mini? And a high, I don't know how that's going to work, but um, I do think that the Mac Mini seems like a very—well, let's be honest. The M1 transition for the MacBook, uh, MacBook Air and the Mac Mini was pretty easy because there was no redesign. They just put yeah. a new chip in there. So yep. it would be nice to see that redesign come, and I think that um, that Mac Mini seems like it is— appropriately timed it's sort of the next product in line to have the m1x and uh, it would just sort of make sense to launch that as sort of the second m1x device uh, i'm not sure if they keep the m1 mini around or if they would just sort of take that new design and put an m1 and m1x because aren't they sort of more interchangeable now that i maybe they could just sort of drop in whatever processor they want i'm not sure but um that is a good question i'm assuming that Eventually, we're just going to see these redesigned M chips, and then these uh, first-generation M chips will probably fall off and make room for the newer ones. Yeah, I guess one thing to say about the Mac Mini, and I guess this would be the MacBook Air too, and the MacBook Pro. Like you'd think, like, wow, they're really going to get an update that quickly. But if you look at pretty much every other first-generation Apple product, the iPhone, the iPad, the iPod, they all they have the introductory uh, introductory product. And then very quickly, they iterate on it. They change the design completely. The iPhone went to the 3G, completely new design, new processor. Uh, they didn't really talk about processor back then, but, you know, it was everything was new about it. Um, then the iPad, iPad came out great. iPad 2, completely new design that they stuck with for years. Uh, mm -hmm. Had a camera, had, you know, all the different changes. So I don't. Th th this kind of goes right in line with that. They introduced the M1 chips into the MacBook Air. They put it into what we already had. Now, very quickly, we're going to iterate and get the real design, like the thing that they really wanted to up, uh, update. It almost like they needed to test the water first, make sure it all works. Uh, I'm happy about that. I, w I hope, I'm sure they'll do this, but I hope the Mac Mini is smaller. Almost, I don't know if they go quite as small as like a Apple TV, but like smaller. That kind of footprint where you can really just keep it on your desk and it's like a little appliance almost. Yeah, I am I am ready for all that I owe. I'm ready for the M1X chip. I still have this 16-inch i9 MacBook Pro. We both do. And I don't yeah. know about you, but I am very much looking forward to the power of Apple Silicon and also this higher-end chip sort of. I know that the M1 has been great for editing photos and videos, but I'm sort of ready for that refined version that is even better and hopefully has better GPU options as well since we do a lot of GPU uh, intensive work. So I hope, fingers crossed, it comes. And um, hopefully that next event could come as early as October or November. We haven't heard really one way or the other, but... Uh, I feel like I saw... Did I? Am I wrong here? Did I see a rumor? Maybe it was discredited that like October 16th or something like that? Uh, yeah, I'd seen that date floating around. I don't know. That, I think that was like in line with a previous event. That seems a little too close to yeah, September. Yeah, super soon. <laughs> so I, I, would, I would guess 
a late October, early November event, just in yeah. time for that holiday rush, get those new things in there and um, kind of end out the year. Uh, but definitely in the next couple of weeks, we hopefully will learn more about the next fall Apple event. Whew, Matt, new phones, iPad yep. mini, speculation about other events. Uh, this is <laughs> a, a fun time to be an Apple enthusiast. Any final thoughts oh, yeah. or are you just going to go back and enjoy your uh, shiny new Apple products for the week? Well, I'm definitely going to do that. Last thought, though, I was just thinking about this because yeah. I saw a tweet earlier. This is kind of inside baseball for everyone listening, but usually this is the super busy time, you know, Techtober, mm -hmm. Techtember. This year it's a little different. Mm -hmm. Samsung is not doing a Note. LG doesn't make phones anymore. Uh, OnePlus is not doing a 9 Pro or a 9T or whatever they call it. Uh, there's a few more that I'm missing, but basically we're kind of relying on Apple to release new products yeah. for us to talk about. It's kind of funny, but it's also kind of nice because – those are the products I tend to really enjoy, so I'm all for it. Yeah, it's probably still going to be very busy. It's been busy for the last week, but I, I'm excited for these new products. Yeah, just like any job, there are these waves of busy seasons. Like if you're an accountant, it's tax season. If you're a teacher, it's back to school. This is like the tech equivalent of that. It's whenever new products, especially new Apple products launch, that is our busy season, and that has been... Uh, where we are working a lot behind the scenes to sort of bring out new ideas and new content and film and edit. And this is our busy season. So Matt, I hope you are surviving. Uh, I know we have a lot uh, to get to. So I think this is where we sign off for the week and we uh, go back and use our phones and uh, hopefully have some more thoughts. Again, if you guys have uh, picked up a new device and you have some thoughts, let us know. Apple Circle hotline number is 949-354-3508 or you can tweet us on Twitter. Uh, our Twitter information is linked in the description and let us know. We want to hear from you guys and sort of get this dialogue going and hear your thoughts on the latest and greatest from Apple. Uh, and I think that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Apple Circle podcast. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you guys next week.